Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in again. Um, figured I'd do a kind of a turbo review video um, out here in Arizona between Flagstaff and Kingman. We're about 80 miles from Kingman right now. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over, we got about 10,000 miles on the truck since we studied it in the prior videos. Um, if you guys didn't see those, you might want to go check those out if you're thinking about studying uh, your six liter. So I will say super impressed by this charger. Um, you guys have seen in prior videos, I've towed 15,000 plus pounds with it. We've had, you know, two cars, you know, short, tall, way up in the air, uh, all kinds of stuff with this turbo. For, for me personally, seeing this turbo make over 650 horsepower fuel only with some 225 100s um, on a very simple set. I think the guy's even still on like a CSF stock replacement intercooler. Um, he didn't even have an O-Dog. He didn't even have the exhaust manifolds or nothing like that. It was on a hood stack. It's a race truck. But for that setup, to be able to, this charger to be able to make that much power and to lay down the same truck with the 88 jet on a single stage of nitrous to lay over 750 at over 50 plus pounds of boost. And for it to be able to tow all this weight, uh, we're coming down right now from a 10,000 foot elevation. Um, you kind of drop down before you hit uh, Flagstaff. But uh, we'll be pulling some more hills here in a minute. But for it to be able to make the power that this charger does, have the exhaust braking capabilities that it has, uh, is just ridiculous. I mean, uh, granted, I haven't really gotten up over 15,000 pounds much, uh, so I can't attest to that. I personally don't think any F250 or F350 with a 6.0 in it uh, has the braking capability should be able to tow that amount of weight. Yes, your trailer brake should be able to control most of the payload, but it's not always that case. So, I, I, I would say you're really dancing with the devil hauling over 15,000 pounds with one of these trucks due to braking not power. Um, but uh, I will say, um, I do need to have the revisions that I just got from Bless and Tweaked. Um, I have not got a chance to load those up yet. Um, because I've noticed a couple other issues where the, I don't know if the back pressure scaling that they use to control VGT or what that case may be. But, um, once, once I get it to about 1200 degrees, uh, pulling a hill, it'll maybe crack 1300 laying into it 30, 40 pounds of boost. If you need that much power to go up the hill, um, that's very rare, but, uh, I would like that ramp to be just to hold the veins tighter just a little bit longer to uh, to keep it where it gets on top of the EGTs before they kind of get away from you. Like right now we're about 1300, about 72 miles an hour going up this hill right now. Um, but other than that, I mean like we're like 44% duty cycle right now. So we're 14-ish pounds of boost. So, um, again, just pretty impressed for a turbo that can make over 700 horsepower. Um, toes as well as it toes. Exhaust brakes as well as it exhaust brakes. Um, now granted, this is the only charger I ran from them. Um, I have been contemplating putting one of their smaller units on the two-wheel drive again this four-wheel drive is not really meant to be an all-out tow rig uh, that's supposed to be more of my daily driver fun street truck um, that i can tow with if needed uh, the weight of the four-wheel drive and the height and all that is about two to three miles per gallon difference and when that's your uh when that's your bottom line of what you take home at the end of the day it kind of uh, pays off having the two-wheel drive so, I'm gonna have to talk to them about uh, trying out one of their smaller units. I also may call Stainless Diesel back and try out one of their five blade setups. Um, they prefer the 10 blades, and uh, for that being, 
with that truck being such a small injector at 155 stock, um, I might pull them and make them 175 stocks. But uh, I would like to try their 63 and a half on a 13 blade 66 millimeter turbine and see how that works out. Um, I've loved that setup in the past, the 66 millimeter 13 blade on a GT40. Um, uh, was it like Turbo America or whatever's kit off of eBay? I've ran that turbo a ton. It's great for 500, 520 horsepower on some 175 stock injectors. Stupid fun turbo. Uh, so for for this charger to be as responsive as something like that and make the power they can make, hands down would be my most recommended turbo for any of you guys that have a truck that you drive daily or not even daily that you know still needs to tow the camper to keep the wife happy and take the boat out to the lake or whatever um i would definitely say to take a look over over at the guys at turbo time usa um this is not a charger that would be their recommendation have you call them and say, hey, I want to get a turbo for my 6.0. You know, what What would you guys recommend? Um, also, most people would not be recommending 190.30s um, to be towing with as well. Uh, these accurate diesel 30% over nozzles are the first time I've ever used them. Uh, they run a bit hotter than... You know, they're a $350 set of nozzles, so they're going to run hotter than a set that's 550 bucks, like River City Diesel's nozzles, or, um, oh, I forget what else it was, uh, I, but I mainly prefer Dynamite. Um, Bitter Roots makes a decent nozzle. Um, I've ran their 75% uh, percent over nozzles, but in retrospect, their 75% over nozzles, uh, they're bitter roots. I believe they're four hundred and fifty dollars. I have personally spent eight hundred and fifty dollars on a set of nozzles from Dynamite that are their super metal. So it's a custom eight-hole nozzle setup and everything. And those are some bitchin' ass nozzles. Um, I've took them the same 175, 75, or 175 injector stock nozzle. All I did was swap nozzles. I did not change the tune. I did not change the turbo. I did not change anything and for that setup to literally uh, run the same EGTs on a stock O3 charger that might have been 50 degree difference um, and that's probably pushing it that's that is so ridiculously impressive um, you got a lot of people right now uh, I believe power driven just did some testing they didn't come out and say they were dynamites nozzles but Dynamite's the name of the game when it comes to diesel injectors and nozzles and everything right now. Them guys are ridiculous uh, with how great they are when it comes to everything. So I'll definitely be probably trying to swap those out here pretty soon and get going on them and giving them a shot. Um, I just, these, these nozzles are awesome for what they are, but I definitely think they uh, they could definitely uh, be a little bit better, but for most of you guys aren't gonna need perfect EGT control towing like what I'm towing and stuff of that nature, they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, but to give this better charger uh, a little bit better shake at kind of seeing what it's truly capable of and how well it controls everything, I definitely wanna get a higher quality nozzle on the truck because um, that's kind of you kind of have a really crappily cut nozzle and if, and if you guys want to kind of get what I'm coming from on that uh, Lonnie over at Dynamite Diesel go check out their YouTube channel they do an amazing job with their like 300 time microscope showing the difference in nozzles and the way that the they're honed um, Josh over at Horse Torque Diesel has went in length about it um, like I said, the guys over at Power Driven, where Josh used to work, they just did a bunch of testing on a 12 valve. They picked up over 100 horsepower and dropped a ton of EGT 
while picking up a ton more power all off a nozzle. It did not change a damn thing on the truck. Um, and they actually went to a much bigger nozzle and much bigger injector. Uh, so that's a testament to uh, to really, you know, the old saying of you pay with what you get for it. So cry once, buy once, whatever you want to say or call it. Uh, when it comes to performance of your truck, you know, do you want to spend $330, $350 on a set of nozzles? Or do you want to uh, pay four or $500 on a set of nozzles and not have to crawl up a hill and stuff like that? So look forward to that coming up. Um, again, either way, this turbo is absolutely impressive as hell. Um, you know, to be, you know, nine, 10,000 feet in elevation, be able to go past semis, towing 9,000 pounds, you know, these, you know, campers and these enclosed trailers are just humongous air brakes. So it's just kind of one of the things to be able to do what it does. Um, especially for me getting it second hand for 800 bucks, will not complain. Um, if I was to build another truck like this again, or, I, or have a friend that was building one, uh, would 10 out of 10 recommend this one, as long as they know how to drive. You're not gonna be able to leave this charger and drive and just fly up these hills. You're gonna have to work the tow haul on and off. Um, you know, you just gotta really know how to drive the weight. So, but again, for most, most people towing the camper on the weekend, a couple hours away, if I could tow cross country with it, it'd be probably more than fine for 80% of you guys. Um, you know, want to mess around with your buddies with Camaros and, you know, Mustangs and whatnot. It'll do that too and, you know, tow the boat, jet skis, whatever. So, again, definitely, definitely look into it if you guys are looking for a charger for your 6.0. Um, this is the biggest one they currently offer. Um, trying to talk to them about maybe a 67 millimeter. But they said that they had used to do that. They used to do the 72 millimeter like you can get for a lot of your uh, Duramaxes and stuff when it comes to a lot of sled pulling. But they, from talking with them and their engineer guys and stuff like that, uh, they have pretty much gotten the same amount of pounds a minute of airflow out of a smaller wheel like this as they do like a 67 millimeter charger per se. Um, the 72 millimeter would definitely not be, uh, would definitely not be pulling what I'm pulling right now very happily um, as it already is. So I kind of understand where they're coming from and that's kind of what you get when you do talk to them. You're not, they just don't go, oh no, this is what you need and won't give you any information around why it is you need this or need that. You know, they will, they will sell it to you with with full information uh, versus just being a typical salesperson be like, oh, this is the best for you, this is what you need. So, uh, like I said, look forward to, uh, hopefully, I'll be off in a week and uh, I'm gonna get a set of nozzles ordered up and we'll get those swapped over onto these 190s. Um, might go bigger uh, and a higher quality. Uh, might stay the same and uh, try out like a set of 45% over super metals um, is what I was really wanting to try after my 75s from Dynamite. So look forward to that guys. Um, hope you enjoyed a little bit of this clip. Like I said we're probably back up right around 10,000 foot elevation. But for Arizona, this is uh, this is definitely some pretty uh, nice scenery. It's nice that it's cool out and overcast. Monsoon season out here right now. So take care and I'll see you guys on the next one.